and we can take a look at his code, I, I imagine. He wouldn't object to that. Um, and I do this because what struck me is, is it, it looks really good. And it looks, you know, it, it was, you know, a lot of, you know, at least some effort was put into it, and that makes for a much better application. So that's not the focus of this class, graphic design, but we can see how fairly easily, by just taking a little care with it, you can make it look really good. All right, so that's, go ahead. A few, exactly, exactly. Because it's funny, I mean, when I looked at your code, like the logic of it was like everyone else's. But the presentation just was a little different and is like, that really stood out as I was grading it. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to look back at the example that we had last time. I know some of these things um, take a couple times to go through. I, I don't expect everything to be instantly understandable the first time through. So we'll take a look at a few things. After having seen it once and maybe thinking about it, maybe you have some new questions, some thoughts, something that you didn't understand the first time through, or you just want it reviewed. So we'll do that. The last part of the class, what I want to do is, looks like there's eight of us today, we can pair off, and I want you to discuss the design for the next phases of this uh, assignment. All right, because the first part that's due is the design of this, so I want you to discuss, pair up, and discuss um, the design of it. All right, and, and so that'll be a discussion. Then, you know, at the end, or, or either at the end of class today, depending on how your discussions are going, or um, the beginning of class next time, we'll talk about what conclusions you came through and what questions you have and so on. Or possibly I might talk to groups individually. It just depends how it goes. All right. Here is Jesse's rock, paper, and scissors. All right. So, that's rock, paper, scissors. I hit rock. It tells me that the other person had scissors, so I win. Yay. Try rock again. Ooh, a tie. And this down here, you can't really get to it, but that's a scrollable field where you can scroll and see the results. Let's pick scissors. All right, we're doing good. Then there's a reset button to start everything to zero again and to start playing again. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay, so logic-wise, this is similar to everything everyone else turned in. I mean, but the presentation is just so good, and it really it sort of bumps it up a level. Do you have any questions about this, or is there anything in the code that you want to see? Yes. What are these? Yeah. Right. So you, you save it like as a PNG then yeah. instead of a JPEG. Exactly. All right. And again, that, that, that's one thing that's difficult in this class as well is not everyone has uh, a background like in things like multimedia or whatever, but that's, that's a great instance of that. Yeah. You know, if you even had that left with a white background or like a black background or a green background, it still wouldn't look as, as good. I mean, that really, the fact that that button is... The image is a rectangle, but with the transparent background, it just looks and sits there. And, and to your question, yes, they are image buttons. Relative layout. Another one. 
No, it actually did it itself. Is that thing known as the index? In this instance, it didn't matter. Well, like you'll notice, like, the, the color, the, the reason why you had to do it this way, too, is that not every time the paper is going to win. So you have to be able to change up. Oh, so the color indicates whether it won or lost. Yeah, yeah. The color okay. Red, red means you lost, blue means you won. For a second, I thought the color, the blue was my choice, the red was the computer's, but no, okay. A, a, a visual cue. Yeah, because I'm going to work on some answers. I like, I like what it turned out to, and I'm going to add some animations to it. Press one, it's going to win. Yeah, 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 it's uh, it is a relative layout. Frame layout, what's that about? Oh, that's what I did. I'm sorry, not, not image boxes, but the hands and the circles of the frame layouts. And I just set the background of those things uh, at, to be on the Right, these are the user score and the computer score. And then here is the, the results. And that's the reset button. Surprised it didn't give you an error. Your table row probably should be inside a table, but if it if it's not going to complain, I'm not going to complain. Actually, that's actually right now the book that way. Oh, really? Yeah, I have the older book, so okay. That's probably the old, very old way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes the old way. Yeah, I I I would have figured that there would be a table layout, I don't know, whatever. It works. All right. Um. Then you have. Let's look at the code here. You have a main activity in a game, which most people had. The game having the logic in it to return either a 0, 1, or 2. And then the game is also a container that contains um, the, the, the number of wins for each, each person. All right. And the main activity then, really, if you look at it, Bunch of code to point to different things on the page. All right. And yeah, these exactly. So this is this is calling the calling the the game. This is if you click on the rock, it calls the game with rock. This is if you click with paper. This is if you click with scissors. And that could have been shorter had I set a value each button, then I could have just Then you then you could look you could have had one listener to look and do that. All right. Again, and and that's also how do I want to put this? Um, you know, you could look at virtually any program written and find something to say, well, you could make that a little bit better. So the fact that you have to do that. You know, no big deal at all. And then the reset does that. Oh. Right. Yeah, this is a great job. Looks good. Um, it um, it functions, of course, which is also uh, important. All right. Well, and, and it is funny, you know. And and I, I was I was actually uh, I was actually telling uh, your econ prof about this, your old econ, Lucy Malakar, yeah. about this because uh, we, we sat I sat next to her at commencement, 
And, and she recognized her name. It's like, oh, I love to have a Jesse in class and all that. And it's like, yeah, I've had Jesse in class too. But anyhow, so I told her what a great job you did uh, on this. And I, I, I was telling her, it's like he was saying, and that's like the test. The kids played this for a long time, you know. And if they do that, then you're doing something right, you know. Um, There you go. Reset the ad, right? Right. Ah. Like a Bluetooth or something? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. All right. Again, I guess the point to illustrate this is that, you know, it wasn't required to do this elaborate for this assignment. All right. And this is not a class in graphic design. But by taking some of these other things and piecing them together, you can take an app that's functional and make it into a, 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 a real, real nice, um, real good app. Again, I mean, I easily, I've, I have downloaded plenty of apps from the App Store that are worse than this, <laughs> you know. And this was, you know, what, a couple week project or whatever, so, or a week project or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, well done on that. Right, right, exactly. And, and, and to, to your, uh, or to my earlier point, everyone's code that turns it in looks effectively like this. It's just a matter of it's hooked to a different UI. Instead of putting a label that says something, there's an image that pops up that says something. All right. Okay. Uh, any questions for me or Jesse about this? Um, yeah, it, it is interesting. And, and again, I think that's one of the reasons for the systems development class to sort of bring together stuff. But like, for example, um, you know, many of you may not have used a graphics program to do something like that. To, you know, I don't know, you may have just picked that up on your own or you, you found the graphics program or whatever, but like in our multimedia class, we talk about the image editing. You know, if you're a software developer, you know, you should be able to, to, to like do certain things at least to a rudimentary level. You should be able to take an image and resize it, for example. Or you should be able to take an image and, like in this case, edit it for the transparent background. And that sounds like a really good tool, but you can do that in Photoshop, or you can do that in the GIMP, or you can do that in, in any number of different tools. It might be just more convenient doing it. it right, and it's free. Yeah. Right. And and the GIMP is uh, the GIMP is also free, by the way. And and you know it's used for image manipulation, and so you could turn it transparent and all that. And again, that you know, if you run into things like this and you don't know how to handle it. By all means, bring that question to class or, or talk to me afterwards so that we can figure out um, how to do this. All right. Great job. <laughs> no, nah, don't work like that. <laughs> well, then, then, well, I, again, I, you know, I don't want to don't want to sound patronizing, but, you know, you wrote that code, I didn't. You know, you wrote that app, I didn't. You know, you may have learned something from me, but the credit is, is all to you, you know. All right. Let's look at the card game. It was funny because I was thinking, uh, you, see, you see, when you do the same thing over and over again, you, and, and I just messed up by closing the emulator. What an idiot. Um, I, uh, I actually started the emulator in my car because I was thinking, I was just leaving my driveway and I thought, you know, I should have started the emulator. Is it still alive in memory though? Yeah, it might, it might load quicker this way. So we'll see. We'll look at the blackjack. Um, you are not required to use my classes for card or deck in your blackjack game. But they're there and if you want to, you can. All right. Um, I've talked a little bit about my Java class, uh, in my Java class about this. I guess Norad, like in his advanced C-sharp, talks about there being two sorts of developers, or 
it's not really two sorts of developers, but it's developers sort of wearing different hats at different times because really any developer is going to probably do a little bit of both. And that is creating objects and classes and using other people's objects and classes. So it's a skill to sort of learn both. All right. Now in this case, I've created a, a, uh, a card and a deck class and I would think it probably would be good for you to use it. All right. Now you can modify it certainly. You can add stuff to it if something's going to make your life easier. But I would think that simply taking my classes and using them would be a great place to start and that will save you a little bit of trouble. You just have to come up with the rest of the classes to make it a complete game. All right. And then there's people that, that, then developers also create classes and you'll have the opportunity to do that. So hopefully in this exercise, you know, you both get to, ex you get to experience both the, um, the, the, the challenge of using a class someone else wrote and uh, the challenge of creating a class of your own. Any questions about this? Or is there anything that you want to see gone over again? Repeat, please. The image code. Okay. Yes. You can see, uh, yeah, except the semester I broke my hip. They, then they stop in March and, and, uh, and they don't go on any further. Um, and it's funny, you can tell how old they are, you know, uh, based on like how long my hair and beard is. Yep. So like you, <laughs> you get a little chrono, you know, chronological uh, thing there. All right, so the code for the image. All right. First of all, let's look because a few things come to play here. And let's review them. First of all, in assets, I have the actual image files themselves. All right. And I have those image files broken down into folders. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. And then I, ha and then I have an image for the back of the card. All right. That, that I might use like when I'm actually dealing it. I then have two. The image names are two through ten. And then ace, jack, king, queen. All right, so there's the actual image files, and they're named with sort of a convention. That way I don't have to write any kind of crazy if statement that says if it's the ace of spades, pull out this. I can programmatically create the name of the image by piecing together things from the card class. Specifically, the card class contains the two pieces that we need. It contains the value of the card and the suit. Internally, we store an integer for each of them. So we store an integer for the suit, 0 through 3. And we store an integer for the card, 0 through 12. But what this class returns back is the name of the suit, based on that array, and the name of the card. And lo and behold, that's the two things taken together that form the name of the image. The suit being the folder that the image is in, the name of the uh, card being the, 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 the file name. All right? So these things match up with the images there. Yes? Well, remember, you can only return one thing. All right? So you, you can create a method, and the method can return something, and then you can call methods on what got returned. But remember that a method can only return one of something. So my get card method, by the way, in the deck, returns a card. And then from that card, we can then go and say, okay, well, give me the suit of that card. Give me the value for that card. 
All right, so there's the actual physical image files and how that relates to the class. UI-wise, we have our main activity, which is the whole table, if you will. By table, I mean card table, not table as in a uh, table layout. So this is the whole table. I have a scroll view, and inside the scroll view, I have a linear layout that's oriented horizontally to which I'm going to add each card as I've dealt it. And I'm going to add an image. All right. The second XML file that I have contains only an image view. Only an image view. Because remember, that is what we add each time. That is the dynamic part. So every time we click to deal, this is what we're adding to our layout. And what we're doing is we're adding it to this linear layout here. So we're going to have code that will inflate this, make a view. All right. It's going to take that view and manipulate it. How am I manipulating it? Well, I'm setting the card associated with it. All right. I'm setting the file name associated with this image view. All right. Um, and therefore, I'm making it be the be the image that corresponds to the card that was dealt. And then we're going to pop that in that linear layout. All right? Questions so far? Or you, you're most interested in the code? Let's look at the code then. the code to give player a card. That gets called when the user clicks the hit button. Remember, it's a good practice not to have a lot of code in the event handlers. The event handlers simply call other folks methods. So I click that hit button. All right. And why, why is that, by the way? Well, you could actually add other gestures. You could, you could have a button to hit. You could make it so that a tap on the screen is a hit. Or you shake it and it's a hit. A hit. All right? So you could, you could use several user gestures to trigger the same piece of code. So that's why you don't put a lot of code in the event handler. The event handler simply triggers something to happen. So all it does is it calls give player a card. What does give player a card do? Well. It asks the deck for the next card. So effectively, we've dealt the card, and now we have that card in a variable called C. All right, that's a card object. It's an instance of the card class, and it has all the properties and methods that we've defined in the card class. So when we, when we do that, it has a suit, it has a value, and we can ask it for its, its name, its value, and we can ask it for its suit. All right, we make our layout inflator, which looks like this. We then inflate our layout in the XML, and I know that the only thing that's getting inflated is an image view, right? So let's look at this statement. Make the screen bigger so it's all visible at one time.
or not? All right. Let's work this way. Inflator dot inflate. What does that do? Well, that takes one of our XML layouts, specifically this XML layout. And we're going to ignore these two objects for a second. All right, but or these two arguments for a second. We'll just look at this. What this is going to do is that's going to take that XML layout. That is, it's going to take that layout that contained an image view. Oh, crap. It's going to take this image view, the, this XML, which is in my resources layout card.xml and it's going to inflate it. What does that mean? It means it's going to make actual views. It's going to use that sort of recipe for a layout and it's going to actually create the view objects. Because in the XML file it's just a description of what it is that you're going to create. Those Objects actually don't get created until you inflate them. And they get created every time you inflate them. So if you inflate this layout three times, you have three image views. All right. So I inflate that layout. What does that mean? That means I make a view, make a real view that corresponds to the layout defined in that XML file. So I have a, this makes a view for me. Alright. Takes the XML, boom, I have a view. Alright. That view now is a view object that is sitting out in memory. It's sitting out in the, in the machine's heap. What does this view, what does this part say? Image view. Yeah. This says, I know by the way, I know something about this view that's going to come in handy. That view isn't just any old view. That view that's defined in the XML file is an image view. So I'm letting the compiler and the program in on something that I know about. A secret that I know. All right? I know that that's an image view. So I'm telling my code, hey, yeah, I know it's an image view. So we can treat this like an image view. So that's what this in parentheses does. That's called casting. And there's upcasting and downcasting, where you can cast a subclass up to a superclass, or you can ca or cast a superclass down to a subclass. Um, when you cast a superclass down to a subclass, you run the risk of, if it happens not to be an image view, if my secret was wrong, and it's actually a table view or something like that, then it's going to blow up at runtime. But we know it's an image view. It is an image view. So this allows us to treat it as an image view and assign it to a variable called new card, which we've defined as an image view. So now, this variable, new card, corresponds to the actual image view that corresponds to the card that we've been dealt. Okay, It's not on the layout yet. This view simply lives in memory. All right. Remember, this inflate layout can, inf can, can return any sort of view. What kind of view is that layout going to return? Or, I'm sorry, is that inflate going to return? Whatever we have in the layout. All right. In this case, we have an image view in our layout. So it's going to give me an image view. All this knows is it's going to return some kind of view. So the only thing the compiler knows is, yeah, you're getting a view. That's why we have to tell it, hey, I know it's an image view. Now, what are these two things? This one is where we're going to put the view eventually. And I was running into problems sizing my image. And one of the suggestions I read is to put that in there. In other words, this is where I'm going to put it. The false means is I don't want to put it there right away. 
All right, I'm going to put it there later on. So that's probably a good practice to do that. I can inflate it without setting, saying who the parent is. But when I did that before, um, I was getting a little, the real tiny cards because I didn't know how big to make things. Probably because I said, yeah, maybe not, I don't know. I'm not sure why I was getting tiny cards, but that fixed it. So now I have, in new card, I have that brand new image view that we created. But there's no image set for it yet, right? If we look at this, this image view doesn't specify what image belongs in that image view. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to put an image in the image view. Think of the image view as being like a picture frame. A picture frame that we can put any image we want to into. Alright? So, that's what this code does. And what we're going to do is we're going to read our assets and put in and create an object called a drawable from that file and we're going to set the image view to that drawable. And that's exactly what we do. Here's a couple of things that we create to bring in the values of that image. We open our assets. What asset do we open? Well, we open the image. What image do we want? Well, the card knows the suit. The card knows the name of the image. And the image that we want is actually in the folder that's named by the suit, slash, the image that matches the name of the image. So in this case, like if it was the ace of clubs, clubs slash ace.png is the one that would want. All right. So it's, the stream is going to open that. We're then going to create a drawable from that stream. So now we have something that we can set the image to. This requires a drawable. And so we set that images drawable. In other words, the image that lives in that picture frame. We set it to that drawable that we pulled from that file. We have an exception because we're looking for external files. Remember, you put exception code, and we, we haven't really talked about exceptions in this class yet, um, but you put exception checking around code that you think has a chance of going bad. And usually, the kinds of things that run the biggest risk of going bad are either things based on user actions, like, gee, they're supposed to put a number in there, but what if they typed in... You know, what if they put in or used a Bluetooth keyboard and typed in letters or something like that? Or things that are external to the application. And in this case, those files being out there, they, those are external assets, and therefore there could be something wrong with those. There could be a card image missing or whatever. All right? So that's why we have that wrapped in exception processing code. Our last step is simply to add to the layout, that is, this area here, the hand layout, add the new card. Questions? <laughs> Too bad this wasn't poker. Yeah, right, now. <laughs> Okay. Of this function, what part is the clearest and what part is the fuzziest? Does anyone have a part of it that, well, yeah, maybe I get this line, this line, this line, but I really don't know what's going on here. Yes.
Y yeah, creating a drawable is a way to take an image and bring it in and set it to an image view. Could you do this another way? You probably could. Oh, okay. So you need to bring okay. In other words, that image view exists without an image associated with it. There's 52 of those images floating out there in the assets folder. I have to take that image and sort of pipe it into that new image view that I created. Okay. Um, like in a case like yours, you only have a, a very small number of images. So it's probably less critical. In something like this, you have 52 images, it probably would be better to do it in this way. Yes? Well, that, that's a great question. Let's think about that. How could we make, and how are we going to go about answering this question? Because, pardon me? Maybe. Yeah, like like you like you oh, do I have my cards with me? Like you dealt it out so like this card like lays on top of that card. Well that's Z in, Z indexing. Right. Yes, that, that's true. But in this case, the problem, that's only one half of the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other half of the problem is I want to shove it over a little bit. And I'll bet I can use a negative margin to do that. Yeah, so Let's go and look. Image view. Although I guess you don't have to do this. It's not like there's one of them going to overlap. The right. The second one, I'm pretty sure the second one's going to lay over the first. So, so. The rest will right. Uh, Okay, let's see. Image view. What do we have? Let's look at the XML properties we can set. And again, an image view is a kind of a view, so we have... Okay, set padding. Oh, there's margins. Yeah, that, and that is true. And, and that's even true like if you go to the Oracle's uh, Java documentation. Um, there is, um, you know, this is like, how do I want to say, or a web development analogy would be like the w, um, w, w, or, uh, w3c.org, right? That's the specification. That is like the Bible, all right? That has, that is the rules. I mean, that is the comprehensive rules. And that's a little different than finding an example to do something. Because then if you find an example to do something, they're going to focus just on that one thing. You had a question or a comment? Um, I don't think so. I think this is more of a, it might be padding or it might be margin. Let's look. That would be uh, that would be funny if I was out here like I have to write a Android blackjack game and <laughs> yeah right okay so let's go and let's try that let's try putting in a margin of negative five we're doing this however we can. Yeah, right. yeah. 
layout margin left, right? I want the left margin to equal negative 40 dp. All right. Oh, nope, nope. It's not broken. I changed it to make the card the first card instead of the last card. So I want to change that back. Yes. So I want to I want to make it so that it first card goes down, the second card partially goes on top of it. And I had it putting the new card in the first position. So we'll do this. Now we'll try it. All right, drum roll, please. Ah. Yeah. All right. So, how are we going to fix this? You know, this is something that I could, I could say, you know, well, well let's, uh, No, you know what I do? <laughs> you know what I do? I set the my margin my image view via code, not XML. <laughs> I hope that is a short answer. Right, that, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking of. The first one changed the right. If they, exactly. Well, no, we, we're already doing that, right? That's get child count. Yeah, you can check if that that layout right there if it has a child element. That right. That you don't want to shift it. If if Ah, I cannot cut and paste today. I, I've lost that ability. I don't know. I don't know how you lose that ability. If this equals zero, then I want to shift the margin over. Yep, and then. I would go in and Yeah. Well, let's see. What's my image view called? New card. Dot set. Okay, I don't have. I I would have to do set the layout params. That's so I would have to say. Linear layout 
L equals new linear layout All right, let's let's give this guy a shot now. Oh no, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. No, I, I don't want to do the else. The XML has that, I just want to override it. I want that to be zero. Yeah, for the first one. That's exactly what I ran into last time. Little tiny cards, yeah. Crap. Ah. Uh, yeah, it um it I, I ran into the little tiny cards. Um at any rate, well, you know what? We could do You didn't see the first card. The first card was tiny. It was like a dot on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, just can you manually set what that first card should be in there? No, you know what I can do? I'll do this. I will put a padding on the inside of the linear layout. Android padding. Let's make this 100. Oh, I stopped the. This is a better way to do it, anyhow, if this works. If it doesn't work, then it's not a better way. 
Well, of course, the other way didn't work either, so I guess it's not a worse way, you know. I, I turned the emulator off. Oh. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, I'll tell you what. I will, I'll let this run. What I want to do for the last 20 minutes is you folks discuss the design. Now, I please do this in groups. If you do not do this in groups, I will assign you to a group. But I hate assigning people to groups, all right? Um, but pick someone, and, or pick two or three or four of you. I think seven or eight is probably too much for one group, but break yourself down anywhere between four, two and four groups and um, discuss the design and when, what, what the next step is. I'll test this and I'll uh, show you if it's, uh, if it's right. If not, I'll tell you that it was right and then I'll fix it and post the corrected version. Can I ask a When I say function, I'm using it synonymous with method. So in other words, if, you know, like if I was doing this for the card class which I created, I would say there is a get suit method. And what that does is that returns the name of the suit. You know, just like an English language description of what it is. Deal card returns the, the top card from the list of cards in the deck. Of what the methods do, right? All right, all right. All right. We'll um, discuss away. Let me know if you have questions. I will probably take the first part of the class on Thursday to um, discuss this with you and and to talk about the next steps and to continue doing that. So um, discuss away.